This podcast is being recorded and produced on Gadigal land. We pay our respects to the traditional custodians of this country and elders past, present. We extend our respect to any First Nations, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people joining us today. Always was, always will be Aboriginal land. I'm Brittany Saunders. And I'm Alright Hey, and this is High Scrollers, the podcast version of your favourite group chat. If it's trending, going viral, or has you gripped, we're talking about it. Coming up on this episode, you already know what we're talking about. Last night was the Wicked movie premiere in Sydney. Big event, big show. I met Ariana and Cynthia and some of the rest of the cast. I take you through all of the behind the scenes because I know you all love that. It's a big show, doll. Plus, we kind of didn't talk about anything else. Well, yeah, actually, that's so true. (laughs) Don't worry about it. Just nothing else. That's all we're talking about. All good. Deal me in, Dole. Let's go. Good morning, Matthew. Good morning. You know what? I was just sitting here staring at you and I had a cute little moment in my mind. Why? Because I just thought, isn't it so cool that we get to see each other every week? Yes. I know it's really lame, (laughs) but like we've been friends for so long and... We would go, like, before we did High Scrollers, we would go, like, 12 months and not see each other because you're just in Sydney, I'm in Newey. And now, thanks to Nova, this sounds like I'm leading into some sort of ad, but I'm not. (laughs) Thanks to Nova, (laughs) we get to see each other every fucking week. I know. We literally would go 12 months, like, without seeing, without hanging out. We obviously would speak all the time and all the rest of that. But, you know, even before you kind of quit your full-time influencing, you never really went to events and things nah, like that. I Whereas, never did. you know, I was. So we never just like ran into each other naturally either. Nah, like we, yeah, it's just really nice. It's um, so nice. Speaking of events, I feel like we have a big event to talk about. Yes. Oh my God, we've got to. And obviously it's going to be my royal flush of the entire year. So uh, we better like quickly get to that soon. But I feel like, first of all, we need to remind everyone, if yeah. you haven't voted today... For fate in the please, TikTok awards, please. Hey, you know what was great last night? I remembered about eleven fifty p.m. And oh, I was nice! Like, oh god, got to vote. <laughs> and then ten minutes later, I was able to vote again. I so. haven't voted today. I've been voting every day off my account um, and the fate account. And in case you missed it, we'll leave the link in the show notes. But we are nominated in the TikTok awards, which is coming up this month, mm-hmm. and we're nominated for business of the year. I feel like we're very deserving of it. If I'm if I'm being honest, yeah, like, come on. I, I think so too. We do a lot, and we just did. A lot for our customers last week, which again, I think we'll talk about in close close friends. friends. Yeah. Yeah. Because Matt was there. It was a big show. It was a bit of High Scrollers (laughs) live, Hannah. You would have fucking loved it. We gave a shout out to High Scrollers. It was so good. But we'll talk about that in close friends. Um, So if you haven't voted, please do. You can vote every day from now until the 13th of November. And it takes like two fucking seconds. So Literally. Surely. Gorgeous. Surely. Okay. What other housekeeping do we have? Oh, last week I forgot to promo my live shows at the start of the episode. I had to do it at the end because I forgot because I'm, you know, so on the ball. So this week, hi everyone. If you didn't hear at the end of last week's episode, <laughs> I'm going on tour with Mitchell Coons. We've got Can't Be Bothered, the Christmas tour coming to Sydney, Brisbane and Melbourne. When is the Sydney one, by the way? Oh, don't put me on the spot here, love. Because I, I feel like I should come, but I'm also like just fucking done with oh, Sydney. Yeah. Like, you know? Yeah. So fair. Same. Um, (laughs) But, yeah, like, I think um, if you want to come along and have a camp night out, Mitchell and I have started planning the show now. It's actually going to be much better than I even expected. I knew it would be good, but Mm. I'm like, no, people are going to love this. There was two girls at the Fate event last Thursday. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they spoke to you, but they come up to me and said, we just got tickets for Matt's show. (laughs) Like, they, I don't know if they had just met that night. But, anyway, there's two people coming to see you from from the Fate night. Love, I can't wait to see everyone. It'll be a nice way to wrap up the year. And then the last thing is, how many bloody years in the making, doll? Tomorrow is a big day for you. Glazy. Yeah, did you forget? I yeah, was like... I just said, I'm like, wait, what are we talking about? <laughs> yeah, it's glazy day tomorrow. It's glazy fucking week. I mean, we don't have to go into detail about it. All you need to know is glazy launches tomorrow, Wednesday, mm-hmm. the 6th of November. Over two years in the making, we gave away 200 of them for free at mm-hmm. the fate night and you had your Oprah Winfrey moment. I know, it was so You fun. get a glazy, you, you get, get a glazy. glazy. And everyone was screaming I down know, the, the room. The reaction was, oh, we can't talk too much about yeah, it. Yeah, we'll save, save it for, for close, close friends. friends. So make sure you tune in on Friday, but all you need to know is glazy launches tomorrow if you're listening to this the day it comes out. And we'll have to tell you all the drama that went on behind the scenes 100%. of the event because obviously we kept it under wraps for for everyone at the event. Yeah, but, yeah. 
Ooh, juicy, juicy on Friday, everyone. Anyway, I think that's enough. We need to get on to the real reason people are listening to this episode. Yeah, your you, Ariana Grande touched you on the shoulder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what we need to talk about. All right, let's kick off Royal Flush Time, people. Please be upstanding for the Royal Flush. Yes, it's time for our Royal Flush of the Week. Now, Brittany, I feel you should go first. Oh, really? I've... Yeah, first of all, so we um, create some sort of anticipation for okay. our listeners. Okay, I'm just dying to ask you all about fucking... I know, I feel like it's going to be a Wicked. long kind of segment. Though. Like, I'm going to talk a lot. So I'm like, you go for your life, otherwise we'll totally forget. We might run out of time and not be able to do your Royal Flush. So yeah, you better okay. go first. I'll start, I'll start. Well, I feel like this is a good week for my Royal Flush because... It's just little, it's just a TikTok account that I, f- I stumbled across on my FYP mm-hmm. and it's like, it's a bit cheesy, but I think that's the whole point. So there's a guy on TikTok um, and his name is David the Grateful Guy. Have you seen him? No. Uh, can you guess what it is? Mm, he's grateful for things. Yes. <laughs> it is quite literally just that. Um, he popped up a couple of times for me and he his whole account is him... I, don't, I think it's every day he posts a video about something that he's grateful for. And the whole thing is just to like, let me just get up his page for two seconds. It says in his bio what the whole point of it is. Okay, so it's David the Grateful Guy and his username is Today I Am Grateful. He's got 170,000 followers and the bio is Daily Positive Points to Build Gratitude. And it's just really funny. Like some of his videos like pop off um, and he's like, today I am grateful for my bed. And it's like, <laughs> he's just being grateful for the most small little things. And I know that can seem like cheesy and silly, but I love it because I just think life is a rat race. Like we're all just trying to do the most. We're all fucking burning ourselves out. Like, and I feel like I'm doing all these things and I'm trying to also wait to enjoy my life. Like, I feel like I'm waiting to enjoy my life. Like I keep saying, oh, when we do this, then, Mm -hmm. you know, like when our house is done, then I will relax kind of thing. Are you right there? I don't know. I think I just broke the chair. (laughs) Sorry. I'm not grateful for this chair today. That's for sure. I think we all... Especially in 2024, we are just living life on fast forward fucking mode. Everyone, every yeah. single one of us. And a, a silly little account like that on TikTok is just like a good reminder that we do need to be grateful. I don't mean to be all weird like this, but you know, we need to actually be grateful for the little fucking things. And take time to stop and smell the roses. Even if you it's know. something as simple as having a warm bed with fresh sheets on it, mm-hmm. I know that's like woo woo la di da <laughs> but genuinely like we need to be grateful for the little things but there are so many people in the world who don't have a warm bed and fresh exactly sheets exactly right so. and we're out here crying because our Amazon delivery didn't get here the day that it fucking said that it would mm. you know Love you, Amazon. <laughs> you know, we can get so caught up in just wanting everything now or yesterday. And I just love that account for just a little bit of positivity and just reminding us that we need to be grateful because we are very fucking lucky. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. What a nice way to start our Tuesday, everyone. What you, okay, Matt. No, before we keep going. Okay. Besides meeting Ariana Grande, what are you grateful for today? Today, I am grateful for my body that can get me from point A to B. I'm grateful for this water that I'm drinking currently because mm-hmm. it's so refreshing. I'm grateful for Nova and you and this studio and my salary. <laughs> <laughs> I'm grateful for so many things. I feel like I am a grateful person, though. Like, oh, I o- I'm always, I mean, I don't take time to stop and smell the roses in the sense of, like, I'm very much like you going, what's next, what's next, what next? Like, like there's not, mm. you know, um, when fabulous things happen, it's not long that I, like, dwell on that. I'm like, right, what are we doing next mm. in that respect? But I feel I'm very grateful. I very, under- I, like, I understand the privilege that I have and I understand um, all of the fabulous things that happen in my life because I feel like it's people like this, it's got all to do with how you grew up. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. How you were brought up and what you had when you were younger. And if you didn't have much or the best things or new things, they might've been secondhand things, whatever it is, like it makes you appreciate a lot of those things a lot more Mm. when you're older. I don't know. Maybe I'm just talking out my ass though. Who cares? (laughs) 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 <laughs> okay, Matt. What well, are you grateful for today? 
Today, I am grateful for the tradies that are working at my house. <laughs> Even though I've been raging that they haven't fucking been there for the last two weeks, I'm grateful that they are there working very hard on my house so that it can be finished. <laughs> That's not really something to be grateful for, Not is really, it? but yeah, you did well. <laughs> Grateful for the beautiful drive that I did to Sydney this morning, oh, even though, like mo- well, I'm trying to be grateful here. Oh, like, okay. usually it's like, oh, like I left at 7.30, fuck, <laughs> you know, usually it's like that, but instead I'm going to change my my way of thinking yes. instead of, oh, had to leave at 7.30 to go to Parramatta this morning to get here. Instead, I'm grateful that I got to drive in my lovely car, listening to some nice music in my beautiful car, and I got to see all the beautiful nature on the way. That's it's, a, it's actually a nice drive from Newcastle to Sydney, the coastal, windy roads, beautiful trees and mountains. So that's what I'm grateful for today. I also saw a quote, which this doesn't really have anything to do with this, but also while we're being sentimental. I saw a quote this morning that, that I felt resonated with me on Emma Horn's status. Oh, status. On her story. Sorry. Um, status. Status. She's done a Facebook status. <laughs> Bring back um, the Facebook statuses. Oh, uh, no, we got some petty gripes with Facebook in a minute. I'll get to that soon. But... Uh, She's put up this quote that says, it's less about getting people to meet my needs and more about who I choose to trust to hold my vulnerabilities. Ooh. Nice. Yeah. Again, nothing to do with what we're talking about, but I thought while we're being sentimental, yeah, I saw, we that, are. saw that this morning and went, wow, that's a good one, isn't it? Anyway. So inspirational, Matt. Anything else you're grateful for? Um, I mean, everything, if you really want to fucking think about it. Yeah. Legit. Your voice. Yep. Grateful to have your voice. My, yeah, my body, I would say. Yeah. Yep. Anyway, can we fucking talk about Ariana Grande now? Because I'm just waiting. No, sorry. Grateful for one more thing. What? Our scrollers. Yeah. <laughs> yes. We met a lot of them last week at the Fade Event yes. too, which was nice. It was so good. But yes, let's talk Ariana Grande, please. Because uh, there's so much to talk about. Not only the meeting that I had with her, the meeting, like <laughs> we've had a Zoom meeting, you know, not the, the, the little interaction we had. Yes, that's one part of the entire night. I want to take you through the entire thing. Um, and obviously for those who may not be aware or haven't seen on Instagram or in the scrollers chat, I did have a little interaction with Ariana Grande and Cynthia Revo. Now, I'll get to that soon. <laughs> yeah. But I first of all want to talk about the event of the Wicked premiere and also the movie itself because I feel like a lot of people are wanting to hear my thoughts on the movie. So I thought mm-hmm. I'd start with the movie for you all. Um, you all know how much Wicked means to me. You all know that it is like my favourite thing in the entire world. I first fell in love with Wicked when I found this grainy little YouTube video, which is still on YouTube to this day. I found it this morning. Um, I think I found it. It's I think it's from like the 2004 Tony Awards, which is like the Grammys of the Broadway. Right. Musical industry. But um, I think I discovered it in 2007 and it was um, Adina Menzel and Kristen Chenoweth performing Defying Gravity at the Tony Awards. And that's when I like fell in love with Wicked and then couldn't tell you how many bloody times I've seen it. Obsessed, got all the merch, got all the everything, know every word to every song. Love it. So going in to watch this movie, I am obviously going to be the harshest critic of them all. And you have no, like, you don't hold back if you don't like something. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So I was prepared. To absolutely hate this movie. Mm -hmm. And I went in going... And by the way, no spoilers, right? No, God, no. Obviously, I'm not going to spoil anything. But also, can I just... Oh, actually, yeah. You can give us an overview. There are probably two big major spoilers in it, which which I'm not going to talk... I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. Okay. I'm just saying, like, what I was going to say was, it's based off the musical. We all know what happens. Yeah, yeah. But there were actually two things in the movie that I was like, whoa, that's, that's... different. That's not as I remember or recall, okay. but it was a, uh, it was very fabulous. I am obviously under embargo, so I actually can't tell you anything about what happens in the movie. I can't talk about any of the things that I saw in the movie, but I can give you my really? thoughts and feelings. How do they yeah. police that? Well, we signed NDAs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. By attending, it says on everything. By attending this event, you are under embargo till God. when it comes out. So on what the would happen if second? right now you made an Instagram reel or TikTok and you talked about the whole movie? Oh, I'd probably be sued. I'd probably be... Fuck. They'd probably just, first of all, ask me to remove it or something. Yeah. But And then you'd be blacklisted from every bloody movie premiere ever. Because they all have this. They all have review embargoes in place. 
wow. um, for the most part, especially these really big ones like Wicked. So, yeah, we're not allowed to talk about the movie at all, but I can share my thoughts and feelings and give, like, how many stars I rated it and things right. like that. So, basically, I was prepared to hate this movie because musical movies, I'm like, it's a bit tragic. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, I will say Hairspray's a really good one. Yeah, they did I love a good Hairspray. Job. Yeah. They did a really good job that with That movie Hairspray. makes me happy cry no. when I watch it. I remember <laughs> I was going to America and I'd already seen it, but I watched it on the flight over because it was on the in-flight entertainment and I was like crying yeah. sitting in the fucking seat. Yeah. Like it's a happy movie. Yeah. Um, so there have been some that have been done well. Well, I am here to tell you, no one else's opinion matters but mine. You need to see this movie. It is 10 out of 10, spectacular, five stars. I have no notes, not a single thing would I say that needed to change, that needed to be better. They left out this bit. They didn't do this bit justice. No, absolutely not. Even parts of the musical that I am not fond of on stage and perhaps songs that I'm like, "Mm, this is probably my least favourite songs. It was a life-changing, it's a life-altering experience to see that. Oh, from start to finish. I'm not even kidding. So from the very first song... I just knew, oh, they've done this justice and this is going to be perfect from the f- from the end of the very first song. And it's also one of those things where I won't take someone else's opinion. Uh, how do I word this? You know, art is subjective. We all have different opinions. Yeah. There are going to be people who see this movie and hate it. But I can tell you, if you see this movie and hate it, there is something wrong with you. Right. You are in the wrong. <laughs> you know, Barbie... I loved the Barbie movie. Yeah. But if you don't like the Barbie movie, I go, fair enough. Yeah. With Wicked, I go, I've got chills, actually. I've literally got goosebumps. I'm going, if you actually see this movie and you go, oh, that wasn't very good, you need go, you need to take a good hard look at yourself. Look inside yourself and figure yourself out because something's gone wrong. There's a wire loose. It is a masterpiece. I can see it being one of the biggest, like, cultural pop culture phenomenons of our generation. Mm -hmm. It is perfect. And I couldn't love it more. And I encourage everyone to go and see it. Now, the only thing is I am seeing it through the lens of someone who loves Wicked. So obviously I have that harsher, critical lens that I'm looking at it. Mm -hmm. The only thing I will say is if you haven't seen Wicked and you haven't seen the Broadway musical, I just genuinely don't know how you'd feel about seeing the movie and perhaps you not liking the movie, okay, I can understand that. Right. But if you're a Wicked fan and you go into this movie and you come out and going, no, that wasn't good, honey, should have gone to Specsavers because from the from the first song I went, this is going to be perfect. And the entire way it was, there are also parts of a movie that you can't get in a musical. And I hope this doesn't break any NDAs, but... The thing is, in a musical, like, you know, you can obviously act sad on stage, but seeing tears on a stage isn't going to happen. Mm. So to see tears in the movie... It's like there was more emotion. Parts where characters cry and we actually see the tears on their face. I'm like, oh my God, like that... I don't know, that was just a magical moment. And I will say that Defying Gravity, I had a visceral reaction to. I actually started shaking and, like, just sobbing so much at the way that they built that up. And this, what do you call it? The cinematography of it all. Yeah. Holy shit. Like it, it really couldn't be any better. So that's all I'll say. No more spoilers about the movie or anything like that. Not that there were really any in there, but you have to go and see it. And I think every Wicked fan will know that they have done it justice. I I also want to say as well, I love Ariana Grande. I obviously thought she'd be incredible and she would be the standout. For me personally, absolutely not. Cynthia Erivo, this is her film. This is her film. She is incredible. Her voice, I just, I'm actually going to cry. Like, she's actually just portrayed Elphabar in the most perfect way, but Mm. also made it her own. Yeah. But I, the, the, the thing that made my jaw drop, like, the entire movie was just how good Cynthia Erivo was. I think one of the coolest things as well, because I've been seeing, like, all the um, behind-the-scenes, like, interviews with both of them pop up all over my TikTok. One of the coolest things is the fact that they sing live in mm. the movie. Mm. Yeah. So Which you, doesn't often happen. No. Usually it's, like, pre-recorded in the studio and then when they're filming the movie, they're, like, lip-syncing. Yes. But all the singing that you see in the movie is live on the set. Yes. 
they sung as they're walking through the set. Yes. How fucking cool is that? I know. And you can actually tell. That's one thing that I noticed it in the movie. It wouldn't be like 100% perfect. Well, uh, in the... I think what they've done is they've sung on set, but the recording is in a studio. Right. But they've just sung... Because what I noticed about this movie musical is you could tell that they were really singing. Yeah. Like you could see with the mouth movements and things like that, yeah. that Ariana was putting her whole badusi into that. Rather than just like lip syncing and opening their mouth right. and looking pretty. Like exactly. you can tell they're singing. Yeah. But I think that obviously, well, I would assume that they haven't used the recording, you know, they haven't used the recording, their voices while they're, although they sung, what I'm I trying to say did. is. they did. You reckon? Because I've seen behind the scenes clips of them singing loudly as yeah. they're on the set. I know, but I think they've done that, but then they've overlaid an actual okay. audio track right, over the top you. for the final thing. Who but knows? Who knows? I'm How not sure. How was the, the, the guy, like the main guy? Piero. In the, yeah, but who's like he, the actor? What's his actual name? Jonathan Bailey? Yeah. Yeah, he was... Hot. Fabulous. <laughs> Gorgeous. Hot. Yeah, I know. He is. I love he? him in Bridgerton, yeah. so I'm excited to see him in something else. Um, I oh, is there's em- not much more I can say without you know. Yeah, spoiling, don't spoil not it. Spoiling, don't spoil but, it. You know, breaking my NDA. So, but there's so much more I could say because the, there's a uh, uh, Jeff Goldblum as well, who obviously I love from the Jurassic Park and Jurassic World series. He's the Wizard of Oz. Um. He's camp. That's all I will say is he's camp. Well, can we talk about the um, red carpet now? Yes. Okay. So let me take you through the whole event. I will say, first and foremost, not everything is as it seems online. This was like the most chaotic, worst event I've ever been to um, in terms of like organization. And I, I don't want anyone, if any, this gets back to anyone who organized it. I don't want you to feel upset, but... I think there was just so much stress in the, in the, not in the room because we're out on the street, but you know, there was so much stress around that no one really knew how to like do their jobs that day. And there were a lot of mixed messages. Like the, the moment I arrived, I couldn't get through. I'm literally dressed to the bloody nines as Glinda and the security's like, I'm like, hi, is this where we go through? And he is like, are you here for the red carpet? And I was like, it's like that meme that's like, I'll have two tickets, please. And they're like, to which movie? And they're dressed as Spider-Man. It's yeah, like, right. which movie do you think? I'm like, Joel, look at me. I'm doled up to the nines. Like, of course, this is where I'm trying to go. And then I was just like, but that was fine. Um, and then when I got through, I kind of realized that that man being a little bit clueless on whether I was, where I was going or where I was meant to be, then made sense because in this little waiting area that they had us in, like one security guard would be like, guys, I need you all to go over there. Stand over there to the right. Then we get to the right and another security guard would go, you can't stand here, go over that way. And we were just playing ping pong with security guards. Like they were just pushing us round, 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 round. And then we ended up getting on the carpet. Now here's the thing. I was there, uh, I was invited by TikTok Australia on behalf of Universal Pictures and that was the first invite to come through for me. And I obviously took the first one that I could get, which was the TikTok one. Um, and so I'm, I've got, I've secured my place. I'm all good. And the point was we were to go on, do the red carpet and then create content in the, on the yellow brick road and create a TikTok as like a, you know, you're at the event. So here's, here's the deal. You, you're at the event. So here's some content opportunities. Mm-hmm. Make a TikTok out of it. You know, that's the thought process behind that. Get in, do the red carpet. That's fabulous. Come back around to do my content. I get a couple photos under the wicked sign. Security then starts literally pushing us, pushing inside, inside, inside. And I get it because like TikTokers are the bottom of the barrel. So it's fine because you've got usually at an event. I know people said last week they love the behind the scenes. This is usually at a big event like this, how it works. All of the red carpets are timed. You literally have heard like E, D, C, B, A-list celebrities. We work we work backwards. So uh, at 3.45, that was like your TikTokers, your content creators, blah, blah, blah. That's their scheduled time. Then you've got um, at four o'clock was like your Delta Goodrums, your Carrie Ann Kennelly. Were they there? Yeah, yeah. Delta. Well, I didn't see Carrie Ann, but Delta Goodrum was there. Those sorts of people. Then you've got your like kind of, I guess, the, the just the step above celebs. I mean, Delta Goodrum, I don't know if you'd call her an A-list celebrity, but 
you know, if there's someone even bigger, like if, you, if Kylie Minogue was to show up, then it's her, then it's the stars of the movie being Ariana Grande, etc. So that's how it works. So I knew being invited by TikTok, I was bottom of the barrel vibes and I totally got that. But I also was like, oh, I've got to create content. We haven't had time to do that. We've been pushed inside. The Delta Goodrums of the world are now on the carpet. Then I was like, can I just go outside and do a video? But someone else that I know from TikTok was like, no, sorry, you've got to stay inside now. Inside was fine. I was having the time of my life, had a couple drinks. They had props from the movie, um, like Glinda's wand and things. I got a photo with that. It was nice to like touch that. And I didn't know it was a prop from the movie until I watched the movie and was like, oh my God, that's the one that I was just holding outside. Um, And then randomly this lady came up to me um, and she was like, come with me. I've got a little special section for you on the carpet. Don't know why I got chosen, but thank you. (laughs) Um, I have to say Sarah, her name was, oh my goodness. So she's from TikTok Australia. And she took me out to this little, that little viewing platform. And I got to see all of the big stars arrive from the movie. And, um, that was probably like an hour and a half or so. Mm-hmm. They're all coming down the carpet, doing the interviews, doing the everything. And then it's uh, Ariana and Cynthia at the end. And then they're finally like, they start waving goodbye to everyone as if they're going to go inside. And I'm like, oh, they're not even going to come past us. They were kind of going like way around us. Mm. And then they kind of double backed and started walking towards our direction. I've gone, oh, shit, girls, we're on here. We're on. Here we go. And so I've got in position ready. And here's the thing. Like I'd been watching them for ages. So I knew that they uh, were obviously they had thousands of fans there waiting to take photos with. They can't spend much time with each person. So in my brain, I'm going, I'm only going to be able to get a pic. I'll take a video and just screenshot the video Mm -hmm. because they're not going to talk to me. They're not going to (laughs) interact with me. They're not going to do any of that. And so, of course, when they start coming by, I'm trying to like get the selfie and waving. And then Miss Ariana Grande decides to tap me on the shoulder A moment of silence to, to, to knowing, ga- knowing together you, myself. Matt, knowing you, and I've watched that video like four times because you were looking at your phone. Yeah. Like you weren't looking back at her. No. And then she taps you on the shoulder and you turn around and she goes, you're so cute. Yeah. Did you black out in that moment? Yes. I could tell. Because the way you talk back to her, you're like, you too. No, I I like, said, what did I, you say? Okay, so let me take you through. <laughs> let me take you through. I could tell that you were blacked out. <laughs> like, because I know you, I'm like, he's blacked out. <laughs> but this is the thing. You have to understand. I did not expect them no. to talk to me, let alone tap me on the shoulder, let alone stop and, you know, interact. I was like, I'm going to have one and a half seconds here to get a quick photo to put in the scrollers chat, you know, like Maybe I'm like, it was because you had your back turned to her. <laughs> but she was like, excuse me, look at me. So basically <laughs> I'm under that impression. So when she taps me on the shoulder and I turn around and in this, literally this happens in one second. Yeah. She's tapped me on the shoulder. I've turned around. I've realized it's Ariana Grande tapping me on the shoulder. She goes, oh my God, you look so cute. I just go, <gasps> I'm dressed as you. Is that what you said? But you said it in the funniest voice. I'm like, Matt is blacked out. I'm dressed as you. Like, as if she couldn't fucking tell. I was like, I'm I'm sweating thinking about this. So then. Lucky you said that, not something like really embarrassing. So then what happens is she's like, oh my God, love, love your dress. Then she goes to the person next to me. Now, this has caused a bit of a ruckus online because it looks like I turn my back on her while she's trying to compliment me like uh in the video it and I know it looks like that and I knew before posting that people would think that and I was like "Mm, that's so annoying but what happens is she actually goes to the person next to me and starts complimenting them and of course this all happens in one second yeah I've gone my moment's done my moment's over let me turn back around quickly try and get another little selfie with her in the background or something because I didn't get the chance to do that at the start because she tapped me on the shoulder so I'm like let me turn around and try and do that again. But it looks like she's like complimenting me and I turn my back on her, but she'd actually moved on to the person right. next to me and started complimenting them. And also them. people didn't know that you were blacked out. No, literally. Oh, <laughs> if anyone in this situation though, like how would you act? You don't, it's, it's so like hearsay, you know what I mean? Like it's like you wouldn't know how you'd react in that moment. And even if I knew how I would, it all goes out the window, yeah. you know? Um, and so then 
I've turned back around to say hi to Cynthia as well. And Cynthia's just obsessed with me. And she's like, oh my God, you look so good. And then I'm saying, um, have a fabulous night tonight. Have the best time ever. And Cynthia goes, thank you, baby. Love your nails. And then we had this little nail moment and we're like, oh. And then they yeah kept walking and then I just turned around and went, oh my God, you're joking. <laughs> um, because obviously, like, I didn't expect, I didn't expect all that. I no. thought I'd struggle to get a blurry photo with them yeah. and that'd be the end of the day. So to get that interaction, <laughs> insane to me, honestly, couldn't be happier. And the universe is just obsessed with me. <laughs> okay, my next question is, yes. did you see Ethan Slater? Yes, yes. He was very lovely. Um, he was uh, much cuter in real life than in the movie. <laughs> oh. In the movie, I was like, oh. But in real life, I was like, oh, no, he's got some charisma. Some Yeah, I've seen a lot of videos of him popping up because obviously the way that him and Ariana got together was very controversial. Mm. I'm sure everyone knows. Um, but then, like, now I've seen, like, more videos and photos of them together. And I saw videos of them, like, arriving in Sydney and stuff or, like, at the mm -hmm. hotel and people have been commenting, like, okay, Ariana, I get it now. Like, yeah. they're, they're, like, starting to think he's hot or whatever. No, yeah, he is quite charming in real life. Yeah, wow. Um, so, yeah, I think he plays, like, silly characters. Yeah. And it's, like, you know, in the movie, dressed as Bok, like, he's not anything special. But, mm. yeah, he was really quite handsome and charming in real life. Um. So, yeah. Okay, another question. You've obviously just been and seen Wicked the movie. You loved it. I need to know, did people sing in the theatre? <sighs> did they? <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, I'm going to have to go another ten times and see it in a cinema by myself because the people around me... Nah. Singing along to every song. <laughs> clapping. The clapping. The applause. I was like, can you shut up so I can concentrate on this movie, That's please? That's the thing. I think if you're going to see like a sing-along, like if you're going to go see Taylor Swift concert in the movies, fair. Everyone's mm. going to sing. But if you're going to see Wicked at the premiere or just Wicked in general, shut up. Yeah. Don't sing the songs because then we, we can't hear the people on the screen. There were also parts where in the movie the songs change a little bit or they sing parts at different parts, but people around kept singing in nah, the natural timing. they're singing the wrong timing. words. I was like, girl, this is not your moment. This is not your moment. Sit down and shut up. I think singing should be banned from movies. And I get it. It's wicked. It's fun. You want You know the words. Don't sing it. But go to a sing-along version. Yeah. Surely movie cinemas should do sing-along versions where yeah. that's okay. But there are some of us who just want you to keep your mouth closed. Shut the they fuck up. They also were so strict with phones. They were like, don't even have your phone out. You obviously, it's another 20 days or something till the movie comes out. And even people, if they checked the time, they'd have a laser pointer on them straight away. Security had marched their ass down and... Tell them to open their camera roll and all the rest of it. Good. Yeah, it was really. Well, Matt, really I on. think that is your royal flush of your life. It is my royal flush of my life. And I do have to say as well, a big thank you to TikTok, who last week on the podcast, I was like, I, I never get anything from them. They never give me anything. Well, they've given me one of the best bloody experiences of my life. And I will say the response online, I find it funny that like Instagram, Everyone is so supportive. Even TikTok, everyone has been so supportive and was like, you, you deserve this so much. Like, so happy for you. That was really nice. Facebook, different bloody story. Everyone on Facebook, what's going on over there? What? I don't know. I just think they're all just, like, miserable on Facebook. It had so many hate comments. So I had to delete a lot of them. And they also had... Um, Wait, you got hate comments on Facebook? Yes. And a lot of people, like, brought up, like, the turning around thing and things like that, which was, like, fair enough because I was like, that's what it looks like happened anyway. But um, a lot of people just, like, complaining, being like, get off your phone and enjoy the moment. Okay. Let's talk about this, actually. I hate when people are like, put your phone down and just enjoy the moment. Couldn't disagree more. <laughs> Sorry. Absolutely not. <gasps> Memories fade. <laughs> There's going to be one day in my life I've got dementia, I've got Alzheimer's, who knows. 
I can't remember what's happened in my life. Mm. Thank God I've got a video of the special moments in my life that I can look back on to remember because memories will fade. So I'm always about people, if you want to film whatever you want to film, absolutely film, film it. it. You know? I will say, though, like it is pretty cool. I'm going against you here. It is cool when you see old um, photos of concerts and no one has their phone. Like, yeah, yeah. Have you seen those? And everyone's just like dancing with their hands up. I will say that's cool. But I agree that like I like to capture like a special moment. But I wonder if, you know, there's a grandma sitting out there right now going, oh, I saw Elvis. Can't remember what he looked like. <laughs> Can't remember what he sung. Can't remember what he wore. But I know I saw him. I mean, what was the point? Well, I'll tell you. The, Cheryl? The, the thing that I um think as well I am so confused by, like, the cloud. <laughs> yes. Because, <laughs> like, you know, we've got all of our photos on our camera roll now, but I haven't ever stored anything in the cloud, I don't think, because mm-hmm. I don't understand it. No, neither. I don't get it. I have to buy it. What do you mean? Like, you know, so I've never synced anything up to the cloud. So all these memories that we're capturing in our phones now, surely we're, like, surely we're going to lose them by the time we're 80. Oh, I'm I'm keeping them on my hard drive. Oh, so you've got yeah, yeah, I'm but what organized. if what if your house burns down? Well the hard drive will be recoverable. They're pretty tough. <laughs> Are these, they? these one terabyte little bitches. Um but yes, I don't I have I have already told this story before. The famous reason I don't use the cloud is because back in the day, back in high school, um my family's phones all synced to the cloud and swapped. What was on there? And I synced my phone to the cloud. And the next thing I know, my phone has turned into my stepmum's phone. And my stepmum's phone has turned into my phone. And she's downstairs and they've swapped. And I've got no idea how this happened and I still don't know. <laughs> what did you say? I ran downstairs. Oh, as soon as I know, like, as soon as I realised it was someone else's phone and then went, oh, my God. Oh my God, I've run downstairs. I said, Give me your phone right now. Our phones have swapped. We got to fix this. And I don't know, still don't know to this day how it happened. This is when the cloud first came about. Yeah, I don't so. fucking get the cloud. I don't understand. I'm like, what do you mean I have to pay to store photos like yeah. in the sky? I like, don't I don't know. fucking get it. In That's one sky. thing I don't get. <laughs> Where are the photos being stored? Yeah. Where? I don't know. Thank God they are, because we can look back on the memories. But what if Apple crashes? Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, we're hanging on to these, but what if Apple, the company, goes under by the time we're 80? The photos are going to be gone. Mm. I thought I was going to have my MySpace profile forever. That's gone. True. Smithereens. Mm. See ya. All my year 10 school formal photos are on there. (laughs) I'm never getting those motherfuckers back. (laughs) Also, one more point that I just thought of as well. Yeah. Just while we're talking about the fact that I was videoing the moment and people are like, get off your phone. They were all boomers commenting. They're all boomers for sure. But the other thing is I'm literally booked to be there as a content creator to make TikToks. Like it's literally my job. The whole reason I'm there is literally to get a video. Mm -hmm. So to be like, put your phone down and enjoy the moment. No, you fucking idiot. I'm meant to get the fucking moment to put it on my socials. That's the whole reason I'm there. So shut your mouth. You know, another rant in the books for me. Oh, my God, I've got so many. I think we should do an episode soon. Just we're, ranting we're just about ranting. shit. We'll just go back and forth. I love it. Do a close friends episode in a few weeks. But anyway, great moment. Cleared up the rumours that I turned my back on her and that I need to put my phone down and live in the moment. Mm-hmm. And finally, Wicked from one of the biggest Wicked fans is literally perfect. And you must see the movie. Well, I'm going to watch it. Do you reckon it'll ever be available on streaming services? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I think I'm going to wait to then because I I will walk out if people start singing. <laughs> like I'm going to wait or I'm going to go to fucking gold class because surely people in there won't yeah, sing. Yeah, surely. Like is it like the kids? No, it's, it wouldn't be the kids that sing. It's just fucking mega fans. Don't, yeah, sing, don't I, sing in the movies. I think give it give it like two weeks and you'll be fine. Yeah. I think all the big fans will like. Do you reckon if I take AJ, he will like it? Mm. Like at all. He's never seen Wicked. I don't know. It's don't hard know. for me to answer that one. Yeah. Might, I can't I just knowing AJ. Gold class so he can just like eat and drink the whole time. Yeah. And he won't be so bothered if he doesn't love it. I'm also like knowing AJ, maybe not. But I'll tell you what he did last night. What? He was on the lounge and like I heard the 
movie sounds come on. I'm like, what are you watching? He goes, oh, she's the man. <laughs> and I'm like, have you never seen that? And he goes, nah, what is it? I'm like, oh, it's really good. Oh, my and God. And he was like, oh, okay. And he watched the whole thing. He loved it. <laughs> oh, go, maybe he will like Wicked. Yeah, he's never seen she's the man. And he picked that out of everything. <laughs> Did you watch it with him? No, I've seen oh. it a billion times. Yeah, no, same. I don't think I could watch it again. Good movie. Yeah, he's like, Great do you want movie. to watch it? Do you want to watch it with me? I'm like, no, I've seen that a hundred yeah, times. Yeah, literally. And he was cracking up throughout it. Oh. <laughs> I love AJ. <laughs> well, Matt, uh, oh. we have officially done a whole episode and not even got past the fucking royal flushes. Sorry. But we just had so much to talk about. Yeah, we did. Um, and we hope you enjoyed hearing a little bit of the behind the scenes. Again, thank you to TikTok Australia and Universal Pictures Australia for inviting me and having me. Um, and I know I said the event was fucking chaos, but obviously had the best night ever. But the event was fucking chaos. That's where I was going with that. I don't think I ever explained that, by the way. So many people weren't, a- weren't able to get in. Oh. Yeah, a lot of my social media friends, they didn't even get it. Or they got in right at the end, but they missed like the whole thing because... um, Unorganised. It was unorganised. I don't know. I know you all tried your best. I had a good night. That's all that matters. But Jesus, security was rough. They was rough last night. But anyway, Why it is Why did they start it, it in Australia, by the way? I don't know. I think because it's it Oz. Oz. Yeah. Yeah. I think that makes the most sense. Well, they probably go, Australia's the furthest away. Let's get it the fuck out. Yeah. Away and done. Yeah. How many places do they go? Do you know? Five all up. Oh. But I think it's like two of them in America, two in Europe or London or something. And mm. I don't know. I, I like that sure. we're included. I know. Well, yeah. I feel... We're really behind on lots of things. I but feel Australia is up there. A lot of people forget. I remember the day I found out that Australia is the same size as America. Yeah, it is. Like we think America is so big. Yes, they've got more people. I get it. They've got more states, whatever. But I thought Australia was small. Australia is yeah. quite freaking big. Yeah. And what, bats. what was it? Like 90-something percent of people live within 10 kilometres of the coastline. Yeah. Which is where all the major cities are. So it's like, you know, come here more often, peoples. We've got a lot to offer down under. Agree. Anyway, another reminder, TikTok Awards, got to vote for fate. Please. Buy a ticket to my bloody show, please. I feel like a desperate loser. I know. But you got to. You got to. Like, that's the thing. Like, I feel like a desperate loser, but it's it's voted by the people. So, of course, I got to fucking ask. But I'm like, I feel dumb, but still vote. And I feel it's like more embarrassing when you lose. I know, because I've fucking asked everyone every exactly. day and still didn't win. Exactly. Like, how embarrassing is that going to be? I know. That oh well. I might vanish if we don't win. <laughs> <laughs> no one sees me ever again. We'll just uh, we'll just piss about it on the on the week <laughs> on the week's episode. The the you know the week after episode after the awards, we'll just yeah. piss and go. Oh, the whole thing was fucked. <laughs> or maybe we should record that day. By the way, that might be a conversation we can have. At the end, because it's on a Wednesday night. Okay, yeah. Gorgeous. Anyway, that's the internal conversation we'll have after yeah. the pod. Anyway, <laughs> make sure you do all the things. Please rate us five stars. Yeah. Vote for me. Buy tickets to Matt's show. Glazy I might, launches tomorrow. Glazy launch. I might come to your show, Matt, if I can be bothered to yeah. come to Sydney well, again. I can't be bothered with anything at the moment, so I totally get it. But anyway, I better let you go. Security's telling me I can't stand here. Oh, my God. Where am I going, love? <laughs>